Hello, welcome. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about how, how to choose the right foundation formula for your skin. <gasps> it's a question, well, it's not necessarily a question that I get. Questions that I get all the time, all the time are, I have this skin type. I'm using this moisturizer. My foundation is looking cakey or it's clinging to dry patches or it ends up getting super oily in my T-zone. All of these different things. And it's becoming clear to me that it is very, very, very difficult to figure out what formula you're looking for. Like what formula do I need? If I'm using this moisturizer, what formula do I need in the moisturizer, in the foundation, in the SPF? So I wanted to do this video to break those things down for you to hopefully help you figure out what formulas you need. So we have to go all, we have to go all the way back, all the way back, okay? Uh, before we start talking about foundation, skincare, not even skincare, skin type, okay? What is the status of your skin? Before you've done anything to your skin, before you've put any moisturizer on it, any makeup on it, anything you wake up in the morning, what is the status of your skin? There are a few questions that I wanna ask you. Are you moisturizing? Are you toning? Are you cleansing? Are you exfoliating? Are you over exfoliating? These are all things that you need to keep in mind. They are absolutely going to be some of the most important factors when it comes to choosing your foundation formula. So let's talk categories, okay? We usually have like oily skin, dry skin, normal skin, combination skin. Combination meaning you usually have like what, some dryness in certain areas, oiliness in others. I think a common thread that I've seen in a lot of the comments that I've received from people is that a lot of us, a lot of us are experiencing dehydration. Post pandemic, I don't know if you could call this post pandemic, but during the pandemic, we became obsessed with skincare. Everybody became obsessed with skincare, okay? Myself included. Uh, it was around that time that I first started going to a dermatologist and got on prescription skincare products, okay? I started my tretinoin journey. I know a lot of you are on tretinoin. Uh, I started using Onextin, which is um, a clindamycin benzoyl peroxide treatment for acne. And I started to really learn that I was not properly exfoliating my skin. Okay, exfoliating is going to be extremely important for people who have texture, who have acne. Uh, I would say that exfoliating in general is something that's very important for everyone, for every skin type. The basic things that you want to be doing, cleansing, exfoliating, moisturizing, those are the things, all right, that we all need to be doing. SPF, SPF, obviously SPF, SPF. If you are doing none of those things, then you gotta go to the very, very beginning and you need to consider what are your skin concerns? Are you exfoliating? Are you moisturizing? Are you cleansing? Are you wearing your SPF? Okay, those are absolutely number one. Now I'm not a dermatologist, okay? I go to a dermatologist and whenever people ask me, you know, for skincare tips and all of that stuff, I'm like, bro, go to a dermatologist. I'm going to link uh, some of my favorite derms up here in some videos, some little links for you to check out their videos because if you are a brand new beginner to skincare in general, they're gonna help you out, okay? These are professionals, okay? Licensed pro profs, licensed profs, not me, all right? I'm a makeup girl. Okay, now you may be watching this and you're like, Alex, I have a skincare routine, okay? I'm exfoliating, I'm cleansing, I'm moisturizing, I'm wearing my SPF, and yet I still, still am experiencing combination skin. Cat just went in the litter box and that's very loud. If you are doing all of these things and you are still experiencing oiliness in your T-zone and dry patches in other areas of your face and you're having a really difficult time with your makeup, something that I want you to consider is that you may be dehydrating your skin with over exfoliating or just overusing your treatments in general. I know that this is something that I have been absolutely guilty of, okay? using a little bit too much tretinoin <laughs> at night, okay? A little bit more than a pea size. If they say use a pea size, use a pea size, okay? Use a pea sized amount. If they say to use something once a week, use it once a week, okay? If they say you start by using something once a week to build up slowly, do that. Uh, I think that it's like a classic, it's kind of like just like, I don't know why we have this like separation. We feel like if we use more, it'll work better. 
absolutely not the case. Follow the directions, okay? It may seem counterintuitive, but so many people who are experiencing oil production, especially if they like, if you're, you're using a mattifying primer, you're using a pore filling primer or something like that, and you're still getting oil production throughout the day, you probably have dehydrated skin and you might just need to like pull back a little bit on the treatments and increase your moisture levels a little bit. I can promise you that if you start, if you've never done any of those things, cleansing, moisturizing, uh, exfoliating, wearing SPF, once you start doing those things regularly, you are going to see a massive difference in the quality of your skin and your makeup is going to wear better, okay? This is before we even talk about makeup or primers or anything. Some people have preferences for their skincare that are going to take priority over makeup products. There's an ad that I've been hearing for Jones Road a lot. Siva, do you have to gallop around right now? <laughs> Jones Road. Bobby Brown's brand, whoa, too many bees. She often in that ad, often in that ad, she says that uh, a lot of her products are meant for mature skin that we use, we use, we lose moisture. Our skin barrier lose, loses moisture as we get older. And so it's kind of like supposed to be a replacement for skincare. In fact, one of the things she says in it is that like, you don't even need skincare. You can just like apply the makeup. That is something that you can do, okay? Her products are obviously formulated with that in mind. Uh, with the fact that like a lot of people, maybe your everyday person doesn't want to go through 25 steps. It doesn't have to be 25, but you know what I mean. What feels like 25 steps to get hydrated looking skin to make their makeup look nice. Now, if you're gonna be using something like that, then yeah, you don't have, maybe just SPF. Maybe you don't need a moisturizer. Maybe just SPF, and then you go in with your balm moisturizer, uh, foundation or balm products or whatever it is, and that works for your skin. Whether you have dry skin or maybe more mature skin, more hydration in those products is going to be great, okay? If you are someone my age, I'm 33, and you have like normal to oily skin, again, I'm going through a little bit of dehydration right now, so I tend to get more oiliness in my T-zone. I'm figuring it out. <laughs> if you go in with a moisturizer, you know, cleanse, apply a moisturizer, apply an SPF on top of that, and then apply a balm foundation. <laughs> it sounds so funny, it sounds like I'm saying like balm, it's like balm, it's a balm foundation, whatever. Balm, balmy. No matter how much powder I use, all of that hydration sitting on top of it, of each other, is going to come through as oily, and especially in my T-zone. And you know, we tend to say like, oh, well, the outer perimeter of the face looks dewy, so it looks a little bit more like, hydrated and, and pretty, right? You can get away with a more dewy glow on the outer perimeter of the face. If it's in the center of your face, it just looks like oil production. We don't see it as like this pretty glow. We see it as grease, face grease, okay? So this, this is where you need to prioritize. You need to figure out like, what am I prioritizing right now? Me personally, I would say your skincare, okay? And then you use, you choose your makeup products to complement that skincare. Now, I do my makeup, my base, slightly differently depending on what skincare I'm using. If I am going out at night and I don't have to worry about the sun, recently I have been, um, you know, after gently cleansing my face with, with usually just like water or a very gentle cream cleanser, I will mist it with the Caudalie O oh, whatever, grape water, grape water. This is like kind of new for me. Ziva. Uh, I also really like the mist from Aven, any kind of mist. Uh, this honestly smells kind of like milky. Just a little, just a little something, just a little something to rehydrate my skin because I live in LA and the water here sucks. That's basically the only reason that I use it. Then I will apply the Kiehl's Ultra Rich Ultra Facial Cream, okay? This is what I apply to my whole face. And then underneath my eyes, I've been using the Kiehl's um, Under Eye Creamy Treatment. It's a very creamy eye cream. Okay, it's got like a little, it's like got avocado oil or something in it. I don't know, it's like a little bit yellowy green. That's what I like to use. I always use a little extra hydration in the areas where I need more coverage, which for me personally is my under eye circles, my dark under eye circles. My skin overall, it's pretty nice. I don't have a ton of breakouts. I do get like a little bit of redness around my nose. I have like, you know, tiny little spots that I'll spot conceal or whatever. But the place that I need the majority of my coverage is underneath my eyes. So that's why I go in with something a little bit more moisturizing underneath my eyes. Now, after I apply those products, I'm usually like running around, picking out my outfit, doing something, and I'm allowing that skincare to sink into my skin, okay? 
If I applied this eye cream underneath my eyes and then immediately went in with concealer, I am going to get creasing, cakiness. It's just gonna ball up, not ball. It's going to break up. It's not going to set properly. It's going to look horrible. If there is an area of your face that you need extra hydration, you know is very dry, or you're gonna be placing more coverage there, then you need to apply those products and to let them sit. Now, if you don't have the time for that, if you are a Jones Road, uh, I was gonna say employee, customer, you don't have the time to be waiting for those skincare products to sink in, then you could, you're skipping that, okay? And then maybe you're just going in with a little bit of a mist to like plump up your skin a little bit and then going straight in with your foundation balm. Because like Bobbi Brown says, it's, high, it's infused with that hydration so that you are able to skip those steps. Now, if I'm using SPF, if this is daytime makeup, I do have like a an, an super in-depth video here that I'll pop uh, that is all about like how to get a flawless base on top of SPF. Because I know a lot of people experience pilling and all of that. Trust me, I had that problem for so long. Um, it's a little bit different. Uh, I will do a similar thing where I will wake up in the morning and the first thing I will do is apply my skincare products after rinsing my face. And I wanna make sure that I'm giving them plenty of time to sink in so that that moisture is really, really like permeating the skin. You want to give your skincare at least 15 minutes before you apply your SPF so that they're not mixing together and you're not, you know, lessening the effects of your SPF. We want our SPF to be as strong as possible. I personally like my skincare to apply, to sink in for like a while. I would say like at least an hour. That's just me. So like first thing, wake up, do that, go feed my cats, make my coffees, answer my emails, whatever it is. Um, and then I will apply my SPF and then I will wait 15 minutes before I start applying my makeup on top of it. When I'm using SPF, I am not using primers, okay? First of all, my SPF creates a really beautiful grip to the skin so that my makeup sticks to it. And I am not trying to mix it with any other real liquid products uh, so that I am, once again, not like minimizing the effectiveness of the SPF. I am making the SPF priority, okay? It is the priority. So my application of products is going to change a little bit, meaning um, I'm really gonna do my best not to use like heavily liquidy products that will mix in and you know manipulate the formula. Uh, I'm not gonna be swiping my brush because I don't wanna move it around. I'm gonna be doing very, very gentle movements. Like I said, I linked that video. You should definitely check it out if that's something that you, if you are looking for an SPF that works beautifully as a base for makeup. Uh, or if you've been having any of those problems. The point that I'm trying to make is that the way that you do your makeup is going to differ based on like how you're prepping your skin and what your priorities are. It has so much to do with not only your skin type, but also what all what your preferences are. Um, if you're someone who likes a serum, uh, a serum foundation, but you've been finding that like on top of your skincare, it ends up making you look really, really oily, then you probably need to lose one of those steps, okay? So maybe if you're someone who does like a toner and then a serum and then a moisturizer and then a serum foundation and you're like, I don't understand why is this making me look so oily? Maybe if you really love that serum foundation, you lose the serum in your skincare step, okay? You gotta lose one of those things because you might be building up just like way too much moisture or you're not giving those skincare products enough time to really like permeate the skin before you're applying your makeup. If you're someone who has drier skin, and you love a full coverage foundation, but it ends up like clinging to certain spots of your face uh, and just ends up looking cakey, then either you're not exfoliating enough and you have like dead skin cells that are building up on the top layer of your skin, or you are not doing enough hydration to your skin. You are not doing enough skincare steps and also allowing those to absorb before you go in with your foundation. I wanted to talk about some of the skincare products that I have, that I've used, uh, and what they would work well with and what they wouldn't work well with. Uh, so one of the first ones is one of my favorite ways to moisturize and prepare my skin for makeup. It's the Tatcha, the, not dewy, it's the Tatcha water cream. Uh, this is obviously very expensive. Tatcha is very expensive, but I really do like it for prepping my skin. It's definitely not necessary. Um, I have tried the Inky List what, is it called, also called water cream? Their water moisturizer, which I will link down below, which is absolutely a dupe for this. And it's unscented, which is very nice. Um, as far as formula, very similar, like extremely similar. So that is an option. 
Uh, this is a water cream. It's very moisturizing. It makes your skin look like nice and dewy and hydrated, but it is not a heavy moisturizer, okay? This is just a really good option for people who have who tend to have more oily skin um, that might be a little bit more like dehydrated without building up way too much moisture. Obviously, Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream, opposite direction, okay? Real thick, all right? Real moisturizing. If I put this all over my face, if I use this as a moist, I used to use this as a moisturizer, by the way, back in the day, before I realized that it was way too heavy for my skin. If I use this as a moisturizer every day, I would probably end up breaking out more because it's just very, very heavy. It's very thick. Uh, if you have extremely dry skin and you don't have like um, a problem with congestion, you could give it a shot. Personally, I think that it's divine. Uh, it is extremely hydrating and silky feeling. It does create like kind of a, not in a bad way, but like a waxy <laughs> kind of barrier on the skin that just like makes makeup look beautiful. Uh, but like I said, this is something that when I do use it, I pretty much will only use it underneath my eyes because like I said, I need more hydration in that area and I will not just go straight in with my concealer afterwards. I will allow it to sufficiently sink in. Another moisturizer that I recently um, tried was this one. I don't know how to say this, Bioma? Is that how you say it? Bioma? This is the barrier repair treatment um, with avocado oil, ectuin, and squalene. Squalene? Squalene? Uh, this is a very, very heavy moisturizer also. Very, very heavy. Great for dry, very dry skin or a compromised skin barrier. Uh, but I don't think that I would use this underneath my foundation because I think that it would end up just being like too much hydration. Um, this I've used at night. I'm gonna describe a scenario for you. We have two people. We have one who has just naturally oily skin. Maybe they're congestion prone. Heavy moisturizers end up making them break out, okay? Then we have this other person who is extremely dry, like so incredibly dry, they can't get enough moisture, okay? They just like have, no matter what, their makeup ends up looking like super patchy. We have this foundation. Revlon Color Stay. Uh, this is the combination to oily skin formula. They, are, they also have one specifically for dry skin, but we're just gonna talk about this formula really quick. Because in my opinion, overall, it is actually quite a natural satiny kind of finish. It's not particularly, while it is full coverage, it's not particularly like matte. The oily person over here uses the Cause RX Snail Mucin Moisturizer. I'll pop it over here. They use this moisturizer, okay? They apply their Revlon Color Stay Foundation afterwards. Beautiful, perfect match. The Cause RX moisturizer hydrates, but it doesn't make them oily. Uh, leaves a very lightweight finish on their skin and it doesn't clog their pores and make them break out. The dry person uses that moisturizer and then goes in with this foundation. And what happens? Patchiness, okay? Cakiness because the Cause RX Snail Mucin Moisturizer is an extremely lightweight moisturizer. It's much more of a water cream. In fact, I would say that Tatcha um, water cream is even more hydrating than the Cause RX Moisturizer. They are not providing themselves enough moisture to be able to handle this formula. Now, take that same dry person and prep their skin with this, allow it to sink in, and then go in with this, and they're going to have a much, much better finish overall. On top of that, let's take that same dry person example. Say they do that, they prep with this, and then they go in with their foundation, and then they start going in with powders, okay? They set their face with powder, and then they start doing powder bronzer, powder, powder contour, powder blush, and they're like, okay, my, but my skin looked really nice, but now that I'm applying all of my powders, it's starting to look cakey and dry again. That person is probably undoing all of the things that they did with their skincare and their foundation uh, by applying those powders. Their skin is just too dry to be able to handle that, okay? So if you want, to be able to go in with powders and do all of that stuff with powders, you're probably gonna need another layer of moisture, okay? So it's how you prep your skin for those specific products that you wanna use. Now say that dry person uses this, goes in with their foundation, and then starts applying like cream bronzers, cream contour, you know, their concealer, and then they use just the teeniest bit of powder in the areas where they like need to set that's probably going to be a much better finish just based on their experience with other products, okay? This is extremely personal. It's extremely individual. <laughs> it has everything to do with how these combination of products are coming together to create the finished product, 
okay? So to everyone who is having these problems, the first things that you want to consider are what's your skincare routine, okay? Do you have one? Are you cleansing? Are you exfoliating? Are you moisturizing? Are you wearing SPF daily? Now the SPF one isn't going to affect your makeup as much unless you know, you're having a difficult time with pilling. And like I said, you should check out that video. But those three things, cleansing, moisturizing, exfoliating, super important, super important in just like your overall skin, skin health, which is obviously going to have such an impact on the way that your makeup is going to look. The next thing, what are we prioritizing? Are we prioritizing our skincare or are we prioritizing our makeup? Are we one of those people who like can't deal with all the steps of skincare and you just wanna get straight to the makeup? If so, then you wanna go for much more like hydrating um, products or do we need all of the skincare steps? Because if you do, then you might be looking at a more like satin or slightly more matte foundation uh, to balance your skin type. And then once you have gotten to a point where you feel like you have that skincare down and you have a foundation that you like, you want to consider how the rest of the products that you're gonna be using are going to be affecting the finish that you've come up with with those few steps. Because if you use too, if you're oily and you use too many creams, it can make, end up making your skin look super oily again. Um, if you're dry and you end up using a ton of powder, you can do the reverse. So you wanna consider how all of these combinations are going to be working together and affecting each other. Now, primer is something that I didn't go into depth in this video. I have different opinions about primers. Personally, I usually like to go for a slightly more hydrating primer on the outer perimeter of my face and I'll use a more like pore filling primer in the center. That's great for people who are a combination. I've kind of come to the conclusion that, that primers are just kind of treating symptoms and they're not treating the problem, if that makes sense. Other people probably have a different opinion on that. For years, I just used a moisturizer as my primer. Like I would apply my moisturizer in the morning, like do my morning skincare. And then before I did my makeup, I would apply another layer. And that's how I did my makeup for years. It's gonna differ for a lot of different people, but I would su suggest that when it comes to this kind of thing, focusing on your skincare, uh, like all of the steps that I went through. Siva, what are you doing? <laughs> She's trying to climb my chair. It's too tall. You just gotta wait, I'm almost done. I don't think that you should rely on a mattifying primer if you're someone who is oily because I hear, I just hear so often from people who are using, they're like, I use a mattifying primer and my skin looks great when I first use it, but I always end up breaking out an oil later on. And I'm just convinced that those people are either not doing the steps that they need to, or they're doing them too much the skincare steps. I wish, I wish that it was as simple as saying dry skin should just use this or oily skin should just use this, but it's just not, it's just not that simple. There are so many things that you need to consider and keep in mind. Uh, so I'm hoping that this video at least helped point you in a certain direction, maybe like helped you figure out one thing that you might want to adjust. Um, I would love to hear in the comments down below, like, what your current routine is, if there's anything that did like kind of pique your interest from this video, if there's something that you're going to change, please let me know and keep me updated on how it works. Um, I was planning on doing an updated skincare video soon. Um, so watch out for that. I'll be talking about some of my favorite, like very moisturizing products and also how I've survived tretinoin uh, and just like exfoliation and over exfoliation and all of those things. Yeah, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one, dude. I just answered a lot. I answered a lot of questions, so I'm not gonna do a question at the end of this video because I'm, I'm dying. I gotta go eat something. But like, yeah, I hope it helps, dude. And I'll see you soon. I lost my little remote, so I can't do my clicky thing at the end. Oh, bro, it's right here. I was looking for this for like an hour.